In 2020, Apple Silicon Max killed the iPad. Well, more like cut off the iPad's legs and some kind of weird revenge tour because for years, Apple was basically letting the iPad run ahead in development of amazing hardware and steadily improving software. And when the iPad finally hit peak design, the Mac struck back. This video is sponsored by CalDigit. After the 2018 iPad Pro came out, I went all in on the iPad as my primary computing device. I used it for everyday web surfing, for my day job office apps, for remote access to servers, and of course, games and movies. I even switched over to a full iPhone and iPad workflow for all of my videos. There were always little annoyances when trying to use the iPad full time, especially just trying to find the right apps to do exactly what you needed, or trying to manage files, or the fact that it was touchscreen only for input at the time, and just multitasking and background processes were limited. It took some work to get the iPad to do what I needed it to do, and for a while, it was a lot of fun finding new ways to do things. But the iPad had benefits that no other portable computer had at the time, like battery life that could actually get you through a whole day of work. The 2018 iPad Pro ran super cool with the A12X processor that was even faster than most of Apple's laptops in single and multi-core tests. And the iPad was a super thin and light fanless computer, way different from any other Intel laptop at the time. iPad OS also kept getting better as Apple added features like split view and slide over to try and give us some illusions of multitasking and windowing. But when Apple released the iPad Magic Keyboard in the spring of 2020, it felt like Apple was ready for the iPad to be the computer of the future. Well, they actually said that your next computer is not a computer, whatever that meant. But the iPad Magic Keyboard and mouse support really made it seem like this could and maybe it should replace laptops, even with the iPad OS annoyances. But then Apple announced Apple Silicon for Macs and a few months later, the M1 MacBooks and holy cow, Macs now had many of the same hardware advantages of the iPad. The new MacBook Air and Pro had a new processor that was as performant and as efficient as what you could find in the iPad Pro, meaning for the first time, there was a MacBook Air without a fan that ran incredibly fast without burning a hole through your desk or your legs. Even the fan on the MacBook Pro M1 remained off most of the time, and when it came on, you could barely even hear the darn thing except in the most extreme workloads. Where the iPad once excelled at its 10 hours of use, which is the same it's always been since the original iPad in 2010, the MacBook Air M1 could get up to 15 hours of wireless web surfing and the MacBook Pro M1 up to 17 hours. This was an absolute game changer for remote and on the go work. And the M1 MacBook Pro instantly became my everyday computer. Mac OS has always been better at the things iPad OS has suffered with, including actual real user driven window management. Without that, multitasking between multiple apps is really hamstrung. There are no real restrictions on background apps and processes on the Mac. You can install third-party apps that Apple doesn't necessarily approve of. You can troubleshoot when things go wrong by looking at the logs, you know, simple stuff. Safari on Mac is the real full web browser that doesn't get hung up the way that mobile browsers do, meaning I don't have to go running for a different machine when trying to make a purchase on a Shopify site that for some reason won't accept input into a basic form, hypothetically. A Mac can be used to code for other systems, to virtualize other operating systems, and so much more. But that doesn't mean that the Mac can fully replace what the iPad can do either. Apple's continuing to enhance iPad with top tier hardware like the iPad Pro M4 and even software features to improve multitasking and add external device support and allowing for more professional apps. iPads are still really great and even better than the Mac for some things like drawing or taking notes or reading books, watching streaming video offline and games. iPads can even be great educational tools for kids or adults and sometimes a touchscreen is the best way to interact with certain apps. But it seems that when Apple released the Apple Silicon Max, the momentum of the iPad replacing your computer slowed, or at least the idea of it. It's almost like Apple decided that the strength of macOS and the strength of Apple Silicon hardware negates the need to make the iPad more Mac-like. Since switching over to the Apple Silicon Max, I've been struggling to find ways to make the iPad a bigger part of my workflow or bringing it back into my workflow. I want to use this amazing hardware, but my Mac can do just about all of it and most of it even better than the iPad, except for offline video. Why the heck are there no Netflix, Hulu, and many other video streaming apps for Mac? Doesn't make sense. Right now, there are still far too many restrictions inside iPad OS for most people to be able to completely give up their desktop OS, which means that for most, the iPad will need to continue being a companion device to your Mac, a sidekick that can help your Mac do some things better. And maybe that's okay if we're not trying to force the iPad to do more than it's actually built to do. That's like trying to use your microwave for cold food storage. Makes no sense. The Mac and iPad can do more together than either one of them can do on their own. So even though I don't have a lot of use for my iPad right now, 
I know that it's there for when I need it to watch a movie on a flight or take notes in a meeting or even add some little animations in Final Cut Pro for iPad. But my Mac will continue to be my main workhorse for the foreseeable future, not because the iPad isn't great, but because now the Mac is simply better for my needs. And that goes for my TS4 Thunderbolt dock too from channel partner CalDigit. The TS4 is my most used desktop accessory for my computers. This Thunderbolt 4 dock works with any Thunderbolt or USB-C computer to really get things done with 18 ports of connectivity. CalDigit wants me to tell you about all the features of the TS4, like how you can connect two 6K displays at 60 Hertz or that all eight USB-C ports support up to 10 gigabits per second, and that the TS4 can power up accessories on every single port while still supplying up to 98 watts of power to your computer. But I figured, hey, let me tell you why I use the TS4 even when CalDigit isn't a sponsor. First, this is the best looking Thunderbolt 4 dock. The all aluminum design just looks cool while actually cooling down the dock with its individual fins acting as a heatsink. Having access to all the front ports is great for convenience, but the fact that the host connection port runs out the back means that when you don't need the front ports, you don't have a cable mess to manage. The second reason I love the TS4 is that with a single connection to my Mac, I instantly have access to everything I need on my desk, including my 5K Thunderbolt display, external speakers, fast external storage, and 2.5 gigabit ethernet for connecting to my NAS. And the third reason I love using the TS4 is that it has simply been reliable. I've never had any issues with accessories disconnecting or drives being underpowered or problems connecting to external displays. Once connected, everything works just like you expect and as you need it to. I've tried other Thunderbolt 4 docks and trust me, this is the one to get for your Mac or iPad or PC. So if you want to check out the TS4 doc, you can find the links in the description below. And my thanks to CalDigit for sponsoring this video.